On a more serious note, the Wall Street Journal editorial board has an editorial that makes the point that I I've tried to make the people over and over again just in pointing out Donald Trump's record. He's won one race, 2016. He lost the House and the Senate during his time in office for Republicans, and he lost the 2020 presidential race. Uh, th there are, th then you go to 2022, there are... Listen, folks, political predictions are something that I usually don't like to engage in because, uh, one, uh, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot that could determine the outcome of particular elections, and it's difficult to gauge where the American people are at, and I'm not very good at making predictions. I come out and I say that, and I think that part of it is ego. A lot of people want to make predictions because if you get it right, then you get to brag about how you were right when, I mean, it's a 50-50 chance that you get it right a lot of times, right? Nobody really knows. Uh, so that's why I personally don't like to make predictions. That being said, I have no problem with people who make predictions. I like to listen to other people's predictions. Um, I think that Kyle Kalinske, for example, has a pretty good track record at making good predictions, so I always am, you know, interested in what he has to say. But here's the thing overall about predictions. If you make a prediction and you get it wrong, you've got to admit that you got your prediction wrong, especially if you are a paid analyst whose job is to make predictions for a living, seemingly. But that's not what one very popular analyst decided to do. So Chris Saliza on October 26th wrote this for CNN, why the midterms are going to be great for Donald Trump. Now, we're not going to dive into the article because it's really short. And the crux of his argument is that if Republicans do well, Trump is going to take credit for it and republicans will probably let him take credit for it um there's no data here whatsoever he's just basing this off of polls which is fine but notice the certainty with that title republicans will do well and that's going to be great for donald trump now listen whether or not trump was going to take credit uh he kind of answered that before the elections this is what he said well i think if they win i should get all the credit and if they lose i should not be blamed at all okay but it'll probably be just the opposite i don't know about you but that sounds perfectly fair and reasonable to me so um anyways getting back to chris Saliza's prediction um he was wrong and look a lot of people we're wrong about this election. Many people, myself included, look at the polls as a sort of gauge as to where voters are at. But sometimes factors change. Sometimes the youth, who oftentimes is underrepresented in polls because they don't turn out as frequently, you know, they, they turned out. Uh, I think that media underestimated how important the issue of abortion was to voters. So Chris Saliza was wrong. And look, that's fine. We all get things wrong sometimes, you know, as an analyst who's paid to do political analysis for a living, you would expect him to maybe be at least a little bit more savvy. You'd expect him to make arguments based on data, but it's fine. We all get things wrong. The problem is that he's going to claim that he didn't get it wrong, essentially, and say, oh, no, no, I predicted that things would go this way and Trump would be the biggest loser. So he doesn't say that explicitly, but he very heavily implies this on CNN. President Trump, former President Trump, may be feeling heat a little bit after Republicans appear to have underdelivered. That, of course, is not how he's spinning it. Important to note. Um, conservative media also has a pretty interesting take on these results. Yeah. Uh I'm using this term advisedly. There are some cracks in Donald Trump's support among conservative media. I want to show the New York Post uh, cover uh, Donald Trump as Humpty Dumpty, uh, that he Trumpty Dumpty, that he had a big fall. Uh, this is the New York Post being the New York Post. I mean, let's uh, let's not say this is the entire conservative movement, but it is worth noting that. On the day after the election, they had a headline about Ron DeSantis and how strong he was. On the second day after the election, they have a headline about Donald Trump and maybe him losing his grip on the Republican Party. On a more serious note, the Wall Street Journal editorial board has an editorial that makes the point that I I've tried to make the people over and over again just in pointing out Donald Trump's record. He's won one race, 2016. He lost the House and the Senate during his time in office for Republicans, and he lost the 2020 presidential race. Uh, th there have th then you go to 2022, there have been losses there too. So I think you're seeing, Erica, some, some 
elements of discontent within the Republican Party about Donald Trump. I, I hesitate to say that's the entire party. I think we have to be careful in making yeah. generalizations like that. But there's at least some. Chris, 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 come on. Imagine if a weatherman predicted it was going to rain the next day and it was sunny. And then people asked that weatherman, hey, I thought you said it was going to rain. Uh, and the weatherman then said, uh, no, I said it was going to be sunny. It, what happened is exactly what I predicted. That's effectively what he's doing here. Now, um, this is what he said. We're going to go over it again, even though we just watched it. He says the Wall Street Journal editorial board has an editorial that makes the point that I've tried to make to people over and over again. Now, they actually put the title of that editorial on the screen, and it reads, Trump is the Republican Party's biggest loser. So on October 26th, he predicted that the midterm elections will be great for Trump. And now he's saying, look, I I've said over and over again that uh, Trump is the Republican Party's biggest loser. Let's put both of those editorials on the screen, the one from the Wall Street Journal and the one from Chris Eliza. Do these look in any way the same? I mean, I get that one is after the election, to be fair, but what they're saying is not what Chris Eliza predicted. And he's just pretending like he didn't just take a massive L when it comes to what he predicted as, again, a paid analyst for CNN, a major cable news network. Uh, he also says that, uh, just pointing out Trump's record, he's won one race in 2016. He lost the House and the Senate during his time in office for Republicans, and he lost the 2020 presidential race there. So he's pointing to how Trump doesn't actually have that good of a record when it comes to electoral victories. Okay, so if you've been pointing this out over and over, then um, why would you assume that the midterms would be great for Trump, given his bad track record that you're apparently aware of and have been warning people about over and over? Why would you not factor in all of these bad endorsements that Trump made, Herschel Walker, Mehmet Oz, into your analysis? I mean, I, I feel like this is proof that a lot of these people on mainstream media, the analysts, they just make shit up. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Now, there are exceptions, right? I think that Steve Kornacki, that is a data guy. That is somebody who knows what he's talking about. He takes time to understand and analyze the data. But Chris Eliza, he's just a vibes man. Like, he goes off of vibes. And hey, if you want to make your prediction uh, based on vibes, that's cool. But you're not getting paid to do political analysis by CNN. He is. So you get a pass for that. He doesn't. I just, it doesn't make sense to me that one, you are so confident in your prediction. And then two, when your prediction blows up in your face, you try to pretend as if everything went the way that you claimed it went. You can't do that. Like, I, I'm sorry, like this story is not very substantive, but you can't do that. And things like this, this is why people don't trust the media, because you are just lying to us. You're lying to everyone for what? Credibility? You could admit that you got it wrong. You don't have to pretend, Chris, that you've been telling people that, you know, Trump would be a big loser. We, we saw the op-ed. It's just it, it feels like gaslighting almost. What is happening here? And look, Chris Eliza is one of the most insufferable people in all of media. Uh, it doesn't matter, right, left, center, any media you can find, he's one of the most insufferable individuals. But if you have an insufferable personality, if you try to create videos that are comparable to like clickbait YouTube titles, um, where you're soy facing in the thumbnail and stuff like that, uh, you, can, you can appear less smarmy and more relatable if you're just honest and you say, look, I got that one wrong. It seems like the polls were wrong. Here's my analysis about why I got this wrong, why perhaps, you know, the polls didn't necessarily reflect the outcome of the elections and Republican didn't do as well as the polls predicted. Like you can do that and supplement your L with substantive commentary, but he's just pretending as if he got it right. I just, I, I don't, I don't get it. So anyways, Chris Eliza is a gigantic hack. He's a doofus and this is one of the many reasons why I and others cannot stand him. He is a fool and an imbecile. And if I were him, I would I would retire from CNN because you very clearly aren't good at your job. And if your track record is that bad, uh, maybe you should do something else. I, I would recommend taking up knitting or perhaps streaming or something on Twitch gaming. Um, no, that's a bad recommendation because nobody likes him. I don't know. Um, just don't do this. That's that's the main takeaway. Quit your job, Chris. For the love of God, quit, please, because you're not you're not good at it. Were you acting like a beta, 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 beta,